Just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with headphones on. What is everyone? It's Parker Man in 1992 Fighter and Disabled Game Reviews here. Before this review begins, I believe it is time for a no long overdue shout out. More specifically, to two of my colleagues at work that stepped up to the mark when the chips were down. So grab a nice comfy seat, it is time for story time. On the week leading up to the 7th of August, my manager was going through the donations that arrived in the shop floor stockroom on that day. And a bizarre twist of fate, she came across this item, a Sonic plush. The plush itself was a bootleg, so the, but the stitching is normally very weak. So to make matters worse, it had two holes in it, one between his legs and one on his legs, where, i.e. where it connects to his body. So normally with a piece of clothing and other goods are is too damaged to be put on the shop floor for sale, it goes into a large bag called a rag bag. Now these rag bags were picked up on a weekly basis, which is then taken to people who would normally try to salvage the fabrics, therefore giving more money for the charity. So instead, she gave me the plush and instructed me to go to a seamstress on the high street to see whether if it could be saved. On that day, the shop was closed anyway because we had CCTV cameras to be installed to the shop floor. The same truths on the shop recognised me behind the tell of the charity shop and offered me to fix the plush for free. After I had taken it back to the shop, the manager told me she noticed that I was a bit down in the dumps and she knows why. So she told me to take it out of the shop for nothing to cheer me up. So I took it to my shift on the actual anniversary day, i.e. the 7th of August. At one point I was so emotional, I was just about to cry on the shop floor. So I grabbed this little gift from the shop of the tell and gave it a hug, which brought me back to the emotional stability. Secondly, another one of my colleagues noticed that I was down in the dumps. So she ordered a diamond dart kit online and made this badass picture specifically for me to cheer me up. Well you two know you who you are, and again, I seriously cannot thank you enough. Now, with all these shout outs aside, let's get on with this review. Ladies and gentlemen, start your emulators. It's time for yet another episode of Retro S, giving you your recommended dose of nostalgia by reviewing games from your childhood. In this episode, it's the first episode for an Xbox 360 title due to the Stormlight store closing in July of this year. In this episode, I take a look at the first RTS spin-off of the Halo franchise. Will this game score high enough to knock Asian mythology off its high horse? Pun not intended, guys. Let's find out. The Halo Wars series is seen as the outlier of the Halo franchise. Even today, the Halo community still holds this game in very high regard. This particular title was released exclusively for the Xbox 360 in 2009. The game's plot is set 21 years before the event of Halo Reach. Humanity is locked in a desperate war for survival against an alliance of various alien races. The Covenant. A planet called Harvest has been taken by the United Nations Space Command UNSC forces, mostly thanks to a support vessel orbiting the planet. It is up to you to command your forces and to put a stop to yet another Covenant plan to wipe out all sentient life in the galaxy using the Halo Rings. Without further ado, the accessibility scores are as follows. To kick things off, visibility is got a 10. As part of the course, you can enable friend or foe colors. As I have said in my review of Age of Mythology Retold, friend or foe colors function in the exact same way as Alliance colors in Total War titles. In the normal RTS game, each player has their own unique colors, which of course might cause an issue for a player with a visual impairment. 
with this facial feature enabled, the color scheme is drastically changed. The color scheme now reflects that player diplomacy towards you. Blue for your own forces, yellow for your allies, and red for enemies. Although there is no way to completely customize or add a colorblind friendly scheme to this feature, to be fair, gaming in general was completely different in 2009, i.e. when this title hit the market. Next up, Mobility scored a Sky High 11. This is where the major differences between this game and other generic RTS games out there lie. The game's interface is specifically designed for controllers. After all, this game was originally released exclusively and built for the ground up for the Xbox 360, so it should be a no-brainer at that point. When playing the PC version which we used to test it, you can use a simple keyboard and mouse. For more competitive RTS players out there, you can use keyboard hotkeys. Now these hotkeys can also be fully customized to suit your impairments. So this game is very easily playable for a player with a mobility impairment. Next up on ability is got a 10.5. Dialogue and cutscenes and during missions are fully subtitled. So our player with a hearing impairment would immerse themselves into the story easily. However, customizable font sizes of these subtitles would be a bit more beneficial. This reduces the risk of a player getting in the ad stream while reading these subtitles. Last but certainly by no means least, gameplay has got a 10.5. This is a faithful remaster of the game that bravely said no to the stereotype that RTS games don't belong on console. Although there are a lot of setbacks when compared to more traditional RTS games out there, for example Command & Conquer and Age of Empires. To be fair, it had to take advantage of the limited hardware capabilities of an Xbox 360 at the time. And the complications that goes to designing in an RTS built from the ground up on a console, i.e. using a controller. In this game there are two unique factions to play the UNSC and the Covenant, each with their own unique set of leaders which brings a whole new playstyle to the table. For example, Sergeant Forge is by definition an armoured warfare general. His unique unit, Grizzly Tanks, is one of the most powerful units in the game. Also, every supply pad that's built gets an automatic upgrade to a heavy supply pad as soon as they are built. So in summary, Halo Wars Definitive Edition is an all-time classic and remastered to a new generation of hardware, i.e. Xbox One and Xbox Series X and X, and of course PC. The campaign is, can be played entirely on your own or caught with a friend over Xbox Live. In terms of PvP multiplayer, the game feels a little lackluster. There is no official matchmaking available in this game. So the, on the only way to find a match in this title is through the server browser. To make matters worse, the servers on the Xbox 360 version, which had official matchmaking and was playable on your Xbox One or Xbox Series S and X consoles, thanks to backwards compatibility, was shut down in over a year ago. In terms of system requirements, it's extremely low spec friendly. The GPU listed in the game's recommended requirements was originally released in 2011. Better still, the game is currently under £20 on Steam, and this is without any discounts. So if you're an RTS enthusiast and is looking for a cheap, low-spec friendly game to play over the Christmas period, what with food to buy, presents and decorations and whatnot, this game is highly recommended. And the overall score is 105%, so close to beating Age of Mythology Retold, but no cigar. This is Spartan Commander 1990 Chief Editor of Disable Game Review signing off, and I'll see you guys in the next review. Mm -hmm.